Welcome everyone, Christine here with a discussion about trade in Total War Warhammer 3 Immortal Empires and I will do my best to explain it though I am certainly not an expert on the financial machinery that powers your economy in Warhammer 3. But how does trade work? Well, you can see the breakdown of trade in the tab here in the treasury. You get various details. But by and large, trade works on two big things. It works on trade tariffs, which are taxes on foreign merchants, so on your trading partners. And then uh, it works on exports. Exports being resources that you're selling to your trading partners. The way it works is you have a certain number of resources. They get divided up between your trading partners, dependent on their, I'm guessing, dependent on the size of their economy, how much do they want those things, all that kind of stuff. And uh, as a result of that, they get more or less resources, uh, dependent on how they're going. Like Hexrotl, for instance, here is very large, very wealthy, so they're importing a lot of these elven trinkets, whereas Katik only has two uh, regions, so they're only importing uh, two, uh, eight uh, chests of elven trinkets. And compare, in ignoring elven trinkets for a second, uh, Hexaltal is importing 20 logs of timber, Katik just six. So the size of one's economy, uh, the, size, the amount of territory, the amount of resources, the types of resources, all that affects who you're gonna trade with and how much. Now, how are resources gained? Well, they're generally gained for most factions through the special resource structures. Though the elves, the high elves have a certain advantage in this because they also have their main income building generates elven trinkets. But generally it's uh, things like ventiers, gem cutters, uh, all that kind of stuff that generate uh, trade resources. And then those trade resources can be uh, can be traded for money with uh, your trading partners. The elves get that advantage because they generate a lot more of these uh, trade resources, though certainly not as much as it can be compared to uh, to a regular uh, resource building. So, for instance, a Vintier tier three generates 48 barrels. It would take four of these elven fairgrounds to compare to that. Though you certainly can, and actually I'm generating a lot more uh, elven trinkets in, uh, uh, in my campaign over here than I'm generating any other trade resource, because I can do it in every settlement, basically. And the point of the fact, if I lose, uh, look at the resources that I'm producing, only 70% of my elven trinkets are being exported. Every resource, by the way, has a different value. So on the highest are gem things like gemstones, um, gemstones, spices, another good example, or actually elven trinkets and golden idols. So elven trinkets have one of the highest trading values in the game. So the actual value of individual resources does matter a lot. But to put this simply, you produce resources, you trade them, it gets divided up, it depends on how many partners you have and the size of the economies of those respective partners. But then there's another factor. The other factor is trade tariffs, the taxes. Now, tariffs um, are not affected by tradable resources, but they are affected, I believe, by the size of one's economy, potentially, as well as various multipliers. Like at the start of the campaign, trade tariffs might only be 60 by the point, I, I think, um, I, I think that they might not be affected by tradable resources but they might be affected but they are affected by other things those other things are structures or multipliers that increase the income you gain from trade tariffs as well as the duration of a trading uh, relation so there is a baseline but you can increase it how much is that baseline well that's uh, a bit hard to say to be honest it's a uh, it's a bit uh, complica uh, complicated as far as I uh, personally uh, see it. Because you don't have a breakdown what the baseline is and how much you're getting per turn from the various structures and heroes and all that. How much percent, how much extra percent uh, you're getting over here from uh, all the structures you've got to affect your trade relations. But it does uh, go up. 
And I do believe it goes up dependent on the value of the trade agreement itself. Uh, not necessarily by resources, but the value of the agreement, I think, has an impact on it. I could be wrong on this. But yeah, trade tariffs are taxed. Now, how can you increase trade beyond just simply put getting more resources, dealing with larger economies that have more uh, resources to spare? Well, there are certain ways with lords, heroes, and structures. The High Elves are the master of this, but some other races, quite a few other races, do have ways to improve trade. There are two things you're looking for, really. Uh, two big uh, benefits. The first one is producing more trade resources, tradable resources. So the High Elves have the Nobles. The Nobles, by default, with no skill points, will generate 20% more trade resources in a province. So for instance, this province right here, it's got four Elven Fairgrounds, so it's producing 48 uh, chests of Elven Trinkets. He's bo boosting that by 20%. So we're looking at... Uh, he's boosting that by what? 10% would be close to 5. So we're looking at 10 more chests over here by a single Noble in this stack. So every Noble would give me about, what, 9... And basically 9 more uh, Elven Trinkets uh, in chests over here. Giving me more trade resources means I can get one... I can get more income from the trade agreements I have. Two, because I have more resources, more factions are going to be more likely to trade with me. So I can get more trading partners. Now, not in this particular case, my reliability is too low to get them. Uh, but for instance, Tala Beckland, I could get the trading partner. But I wouldn't necessarily generate a lot from the trading materials themselves. Do, do, do you do need cert a certain amount? The way the AI works is it wants you to have a certain amount of resources so that the trade deal is worth it to them. So for instance, if I'm looking at Tala Beckland, like they would only get 175 uh, from this, whereas I would get uh, 600. So they're not quite willing uh, when, it, when it comes to that. And mainly they would get 175 from uh, tr trade tariffs, whereas I would get almost 400 Mistress from that trade tariffs and that would actually constitute the majority of the trade but more resources means factions are more willing uh, to do it they they're more willing uh, to trade with you if they're actually getting something out of it i uh, factions are very willing uh, are more willing if they actually have a lot of resources themselves because they might benefit from that quite a bit that will improve their income by a substantial amount but uh, that's one aspect to it there are more Income from trade tariffs. Now, there are commandments like the High Elves have, uh, the tribute to the Phoenix King, which gives you 4% from trade tariffs. Um, there are buildings, there are heroes, including the nobles the over here. So trade tariffs are those ta taxes. They do have a baseline, but you can increase, uh, you can increase the amount by quite a lot. So w what nobles have, for instance, is 3% from trade tariffs. What um, handmaidens do have is 5% for the High Elves. Other races may have their own alternatives or not, dependent on what you're talking about. There's also a structure over here, the Elven Embassy, that gives you 5% income from trade tariffs. Okay, is it worth going for trade tariffs? Now, going after resources, that makes perfect sense, but is it worth going after trade tariffs? To improve them well yes and no that would be my perspective it depends on the size of your economy it depends on how many trading partners you have how much you're getting from the trade agreements so for instance over here with my faction let's say the baseline and it's quite likely that the baseline is that the baseline of trade that i might get with the faction might be something like 200 from trade tariffs with no agents with no agents or no structures if I get a lot of them, you know, right now I've gotten a lot of structures, a lot of elven embassies, heroes. Uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes down to, uh, to it, you can get a lot from trade tariffs, and it's boosting trade tariffs in the long term that will actually generate you a lot of money. Sure, boosting trade goods would be ideal 
And there are multiple ways to do it than just, like, say, the Noble Heroes. For instance, the High Elves have another alternative, one that's actually far better if you can get it. Um, like, you can mass Nobles far more easily, but there's also an, another alternative. And that's the Merchant Lord on um, Princes, Princesses, and Legendary Lords. They all have this Merchant Lord skill that, give, that produces 9% more tradable resources faction wide so all the resources so i would basically get close to 10 percent resources over here that would be a fairly gigantic uh income benefit really uh, to me but right now i'm actually but even with that even with th that many tradable resources a lot um a lot of my current uh, actually i'll just go over here I, i'm just so used to the diplomacy screen i never look at the treasury screen but a lot of my current income from trading partners, uh, a lot of it is like, for instance, burning steps nomads, 400 is from tariffs, uh, Carcassonne, 400, Katik, 400, all that. A lot of it is from trade tariffs. Trade tariffs is how you make bank with a lot of trading partners later on, because there's only so many resources uh, that can go around. Even as the high elves who generate the most amount of resources, the more trade tariffs you get, the more income you're getting from your trading partners, the better it gets. Cafe is good in, in this respect because one of their main yin economic buildings increases, if I'm not mistaken, their trade tariff income. So they can earn a lot from that. Increasing tradable resources is great. For instance, what a lot of people used to do with High Elves in Warhammer 2 is they would basically get 100, uh, like they would get 100 nobles or 20 nobles over here. Each of them, through their special skill tree, can get to 50% uh, tradable resources, increasing the amount of chests. And you just get noble after noble after noble with a bunch of Elven Fairgrounds. You're generating a lot of, of resources that you're then uh, selling by increasing trade tariffs will also generate a significant amount of income like right now with all the buildings i get uh, all the buildings and agents that i have and i don't have a ridiculous uh, a, a, an absolutely ridiculous amount of territory or elven embassies so i have gotten quite a few of them um but with all that i have i'm quite likely doubling the amount of income that i'm getting from uh trade tariffs in general and as a result of that let's say I have 14 trade partners and I'm getting 200 more for each of them or so, maybe even more more than that, but it's certainly 200. Let's say I'm generating, you know, 200, that's 200 or 15. That's a, quite a pretty decent amount of income that I'm generating. A pretty decent amount. Though, of course, you will generate more from the resources itself. It, it just like combines together you need resources to get trading partners you need resources for money but then you can also benefit from uh, trade tariffs uh, i'd say trading tar uh, tariffs uh, benefit you a lot more the larger your economy goes the more trading partners you have the more resources you have it's all gonna start scaling up and that's when you want to care about this uh, the way i'd view it in a campaign and even at this point i might have exaggerated with going with so many structures i might have benefited uh, from going with, um, with more of these plazas, for instance. Um, the way I'd, see is, uh, I'd, uh, I'd say it when it comes to trade. Early on, what matters is getting the resources. Getting trade partners, getting that number up. Later on, once you've got 10, 15 trading partners and a lot of trade resources to go along with it, that's when you start really taking advantage of trade tariffs up until that point trade tariffs are not quite as important it'll still give you a benefit and it might even be worth it like let's say you upgrade let's say a single one of these uh, gives you uh, 10 income per trading partner right that's still quite a bit because you might because you know it could be worth a hundred income in total uh, it might, and it's just a single structure it's not free structures for instance now, 100, sure, it's not going to compare to the Promenade, but obviously it also has other benefits as well, like the influence benefit, the port benefit, all that. So, might have exaggerated here with uh, the Elven Embassies, but uh, working 
focusing on trading resources as opposed to trade tariffs is more important, but trade tariffs are also a way to make a lot of money. The thing to, to say, though, about trade resources, you're never like the one thing to say when it comes to trade resources is right now. If I look at my trade partners, there's quite a, a few of them where, like, for instance, Osland, where the majority of the res uh, the money that I'm making is actually through trade tariffs. Like if you can get trade tariffs, you can make bank, especially on some of the smaller factions, not the bigger ones. The bigger ones, you'll benefit more with trade resources, but like the smaller ones, you'll benefit a lot more with respect uh, to... Uh, uh, to trade tariffs like trade tariffs basically allow you to scam the minor factions who just can't afford a lot of resources can't buy a lot of resources but for instance like Nordland over here right I'm generating a thousand but out of that a thousand four hundred almost is from trade tariffs always keep in mind that because it also depends on the size of the faction that you're trading with and how much money they have how big is their economy how many settlements they have how many resources do they have? The resources do they have? A big faction, uh, like with a smaller faction, trade tariffs might be more important. But with a bigger faction, uh, trade resources might be more important. There's obviously a lot of other things as well that could go into this, but I, I think I've covered the gist of it. Questioner signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, enable notifications, and stay tuned for more.